Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today I want to show you some loose stucco, but I'm over here to show you something else also. This is a well-built house. It's only about 15 years old, but we have some stucco separated. The integrity of the stucco, I looked at the place yesterday, I'd give it a 9. It's built extremely well. We're going to walk around. I'll show you this because you can see that the house was built extremely well. However, we have a, an issue over here. And by the way, guys, we are on top of the world. We're above Grizzly Peak in Oakland, and that's high, high altitude. It's, it's, it's really high, and what we're dealing with is right now, it's, it's really cold, too. It's about, I say 50 degrees, and it's just really cold up here. Can you focus on that, Jay? Okay, you folks... You see, we have some stucco buckling here. And this is a color coat buckling. Why? The homeowner said, Kirk, now I've watched a few of your videos, and I sent him a video of why this happened. He said, well, can you explain it a little bit more in depth? And I thought, sure I can. In fact, I'll explain it to you folks more in depth of why did this happen here. There's only two areas on this whole house, and this is a humongous house, about 5,000 square feet. Over there, too, we have it on the pop-out. On that bay window, there's a little bit of this same happening. Why is this happening? Well, you can't repair it unless you understand why it's happening. Now, my, my thing was I walked around the entire house, and I looked at every square inch thinking, you know, you're responsible for this once you do the fix. Because the fellow said, I've had it fixed about five times, and it keeps coming off, keeps coming off. So I, I looked at it, and I said, okay, here's why it happened. Number one, the, the fellows who came here to do the initial stucco work, they did a great, great job, but they had about 12 guys. I used to have about 15 guys. There was a time where I'd work nine months and then three months for the government. My taxes were like 20000 a year paying taxes uh, because I had a lot of guys, but a lot of guys, a lot of responsibilities. Now I just work with Jason on the camera and my other sons, my brother, one guy maybe. Anyway, when they did the base coat here, they did a great base coat. They steel troweled the base coat, and that's a smooth base coat. I mean, that's smooth as a baby's butt. That's really smooth. You want to give the base coat a float finish with a hard rubber float and give it a little bit of porousness. Right now, this is very smooth, but they could have allotted for that, meaning how do you account for such a smooth finish? Well, you either put a bonding agent on it or you keep a water hose. They lost their mechanical bond on here. Now, what's a mechanical bond? That is when you're applying the, the finish here. And by the way, this is a Santa Barbara two coat finish. Right here, they got uh, two coats. I can see it right here. They've got w one fat coat and it's three eighths to a quarter. You can't watch everybody on a job. Doesn't mean they did a bad job, but what they originally had here when they did these two coats or some of it's two coat, this is obviously one coat work, and it's too thick. But that's not why it's separated. It's separated because they didn't have the mechanical bond. Let me show you guys something weird, or but it's, it's a fact. That tree over there, that tree omits a yellow type of uh, dust when it's sometimes, and that dust goes all over. How do I know? Because I got the same tree, and that dust covers everything. So when they did this wall, Two things is why this is separating from the base coat. Number one, it's too smooth. And they, when the guy, whoever did this area here, he didn't have a water hose with him. And what you do is you wet the wall and you wash the dust off if, in fact, the dust came from that tree and got on this because nothing adheres to a dusty surface. So the fellas here, they put it on dry. They put it on dry. With, and it lost its mechanical bond, and they obviously did not have the weldcrete or bonding agent. There's a number of bonding agents you can use. And they put it on too thick. So they put it on thick, and what would have happened was, this was about 15 years ago, the thick coat would have spider checked. It would have spider checked, and spider check is different from hairlining, guys. Hairlining happens when the houses move. The rain lifts them, and they drop. Constriction and expansion. That's called spider checking. Or hairline. This is spider checking. So spider checking will have occurred everywhere here where they put the, the Santa Barbara on much too thick. 
but that's not why it's separated. It's separated because it didn't have the mechanical bond. Okay, how are we going to give it the mechanical bond? First thing we're going to do is we're going to scrape off all this. And yes, I am going to wear a mask because I don't know what's in here. I don't want to know. It's uh, Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish. I know that. Or any of the other uh, color coats that have the same properties. They have silica sand. Silica sand is very fine. It's kind of like talcum powder. You do two coats and you can get it smooth like this. But this is also painted. So once we remove all this and remove all that, I'm going to take a pressure washer. Because if I were to just take a wire brush, what I want to do with the pressure washer is I want to micro score this wall. That means I want to get all the dust off that we can see and more importantly the dust we can't see. If I use a wire brush, man, I could wire brush this until the cows come home and it's not going to do it. It'll micro score this, put fine lines in it, but it won't remove the dust. And if I put another two coats over a dusty surface, I'm just as guilty of ignorance as the first guy who did this. Now the contractor again, great job. He even got a weep screed following the stairs. I give that fella a nine or almost a ten because you can't watch everybody on a job. So when we come back, we're going to pressure wash this well. And when I say pressure wash, I'm talking about 3,500 psi pounds. That means a gas powered pressure washer because an electric pressure washer won't get the dust and dirt and grime off. Plus, it won't micro score this. I don't even know if micro score is a word, but that means get all this stuff off and scratch the surface so our new finish will adhere. In fact, I'm going to be using a bonding agent. Anyway, guys, you can't repair something if you don't know why the heck it even happened. I know why this happened, and that's a long, drawn-out story of all why it happened, but you got to know it in order to repair it. So we're going to go ahead and remove all this stuff here, just like this here. It comes right off. Wear a mask if you guys do this because this stucco is really not good to inhale. So anyway, I'm going to get a mask on. We're going to get this off. We're going to pressure wash it. We'll just show you a second of pressure washing, but we'll show you how to repair it too. Okay, guys, we've spent about four hours scraping this wall. Me, Jen, Lou, my brother. Okay, now when we get all the loose stuff off or what we think, we hook up this pressure washer, and this is not this is a gas-powered one. It has a lot of power. And what I generally do is we're going to continue to try what we couldn't get off with a hammer and chisel. We've got to try to get off with this. Now watch. You get the idea. And again, guys, this is the result of guys just not applying the proper mechanical bond, which can be a bonding agent like one of these guys here. These are bonding agents. Any bonding agent will work. But when you're doing a color coat, you don't really need a bonding agent. I use it sometimes just for different reasons. But if the mechanical bond is you have to have this wet and you have to have your finish wet and you apply that and that's how it adheres. So uh, the owner asked me, how come it look like sags too? And I said, well, they used a paint which was an elastomeric. How does, he said, how, well, how do you know? An elastomeric is usually all acrylic and that won't allow the water to penetrate. And there's a big issue of should you seal a house or should it be breathable? Not this video, we're not getting into that. But the water went in on the top, it comes down and there's nowhere for the water to go, so it bubbles it. And every year, the cracks get bigger because of um, spalling. The water gets in, it freezes, it pushes it out a little bit. That's what happened originally. Water shouldn't even get behind it, but that's another story, too, and why it bulged in so many areas. Anyway, we're going to continue taking this off. We're going to apply a bonding agent, then we'll show you how we put it back together. All right, guys, for the sake of uh, video, I always start from the top, work my way down which I was doing, but here's what you want to do. Now, because, because we're doing uh, two coats of Santa Barbara. Um, Santa Barbara, by the way, is just the name of La Habra's color coat that has silica sand in it. All companies have their own um, names, like BMI has marble, uh, Western has its 
uh, Omega has theirs. Everybody, every major manufacturer has a type of finish that is a silica sand, which is, again, uh, called uh, Santa Barbara, and that's the most most popular, I guess, because it's been out the longest. Uh, but they all have the same sand grips. So you've got your fine, which is smooth, your medium, which is 2030, and then your heavy, which is 1620. And those numbers just indicate the aggregate or the sand. So what we're doing is we are putting that first coat on it. And I just thought I'd show you on video the first coat. You just kind of feather into it. And because we're matching a smooth finish here, if this had heavy sand, when I go to do my second coat, you'll see a transition. You see a lot of sand here, cat faces and stuff. This is not a, a perfect Santa Barbara, but it's uh, close enough. So we're going to match that finish. And when I take it up here on the joint, if it's a heavier sand, say like 20 or 30, my joint would show. But when we're all said and done, we won't see the joint. And we're feathering in as best as possible. And lastly, guys, too. Some areas, you, I know folks are going to call and say, well, how do you know you got enough done? Well, I pressure wash as much as you can. It all shoots in your face, by the way, when you're at a corner like this. Then we use a chisel to get the rest. Then we have to pressure wash again to get the dust of the chisel off. So there's a bit to it. Anyway, when we get to the second coat and we're matching this finish, we'll uh, show you that part too. All right, guys, we are back with the Santa Barbara Smooth Mission finish. It's best to do it two coats. Generally, what I do is I'll do the first coat and second coat, double it up, depending on the weather. Here, just for the sake of um, showing you guys, I put the first coat on, let it set. A good idea for the second coat is to know your mud. And if you know your mud, you can realize that, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to wet the wall first. And right here, I'm just going upward. I'm filling it up and going upward. Why? Because they have got sharp corners, which means they did it just like I did. They come here, upward. Come here, upward. You, you create the bull nose, then you brush it afterwards. You create it. Take it here, put your second coat over it. This, this video is not so much about how to do a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish. If you know how to do, say, veneer finishes, which have a lot of lime in it, and so does the Santa Barbara finishes, or smooth mission, or any, any type of smooth, they have a lot of lime, so they you have to know how much to trowel and water's necessary, things of that nature. It was more about sometimes you get somebody who's on your crew and they're anxious to get home, and there's no big deal in that. Uh, I, as I said when I started this video, I had uh, I had a big crew at one time, like 15 guys, and there's always somebody who wants to go home and watch cartoons or do whatever they do because I remember when I was a young buck and working on the crew all I wanted to do was go home not watch cartoons but watch Gilligan's Island so you got to watch everybody and the fact that one person didn't wet the wall down or prep it properly that's what you get when you have a big crew See where I'm going with this. I've got where you, this is going to be painted. These are the Santa Barbara. Again, this this here, this color here is a different base. What's that mean? Well, you got base coat 100, base coat 200, and that just means the color of the material. Base 100 is white, base 200 is gray, and I can see we're already onto the second bag not much here but it's uh, it's the finish that takes quite a while to do 
very very similar to again uh, the veneers I show how to how to do veneer finishes guys in quite a few other videos and we also show how to do Santa Barbara smooth mission finish but that's not what this video is about this it is just about loose stucco and some of the reasons why stucco can become loose usually as I said when I started this it is a matter of absorption whether or not it has a bonding agent or you're just going over a brown coat absorption is everything with a Santa Barbara or any other finish you don't really need a bonding agent so um, it's the absorption that really matters guys you can't have dust on it you can't have uh, moss dirt you can't have anything because nothing adheres to a dusty surface now what I'll do is I'll finish my my uh, Santa Barbara tie-in and yeah I'm using a green float you could use a, a lot of different tools spray bottles water hose if you know what you're doing and such this is again what we do with with the imperial finishes we put it on we bring it back to life and now I make everything a little smoother this is just again how we do a Santa Barbara and take it take it got any fat which you're always going to have a little fat move that fat around and if a little water here a little water there that's the advantage of the Santa Barbara you can bring it back to life but only for a while let's see holiday holidays we've just fill up fill them up and again when you're doing corners always go upward you go downward you pull it off you see where this is going and just get your joints out get your joints out two hands no such thing as a one-handed plaster you come here bring it back just like just like veneer interior finishes you can see up there where what we've already done it's uh, just going back over it back over it but again it's not about the finish it's about why it failed okay guys this is the completion of it it's getting dark we have about a half hour to get that mixer home so as usual Jason and I thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one once again folks we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments if you guys like this video please click the like button down below and also if you enjoy what we do subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you my name is Kirk and Jay we thank you for watching and from the entire Giordano family we'll, we'll see you on the next one, one.